Hello, hello and welcome back and welcome to Irina Shestuck. So um, Irina works at MongoDB and she's writing in JavaScript and Rust. Um, she gives talks and conferences around the world about her adventures in programming. Um, she's also told me that she's got two cats called Nori and Chetsu who are both very good. Um, she makes zines outside of her working time. Um, so I'd, Irina, you can correct me on this, but it's a self-published magazine, I believe. Um, but Irene, yeah, is that correct? Did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a self-published like little booklet that some with me. They're like little pages that you can open and read. Yeah. Oh, They're bigger wow. ones, but I make pretty small ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Um and today you're going to be walking us through the challenges of bundling your tools together with Node.js, zipping it and distributing it through a standalone package. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Over it. to you. Sweet. Hello, everyone. How's it going? It's been a few years since my last NodeConf. Um, I think maybe two or three, but I hope you've been well since. I've got a whole bunch of plants in the meantime. Um, got two cats too. I didn't have those last um, no come for you. Um, but yeah, it's good to be here. And thanks for having me, uh, the organizers. So that is, thanks for having me. All right. So today's talk is today's talk is um, about packaging an OJS binary um, and how to get it working on several platforms perhaps two, perhaps three, but we're actually working with five, and now I will talk to you about that. And hi, everyone. I'm Irina. Uh, I'm a software engineer at MongoDB, and I work on the DevTools team, uh, which takes care of a few different developer tools uh, for MongoDB. Primarily, we work with Compass, which is a GUI for MongoDB. It's an Electron app. Um, we've recently took on two new projects. One is the VX Code extension, uh, which lets you work with MongoDB a little bit better in VS Code, like have aggregation pipeline playgrounds and other playgrounds and be able to have different connections. And the tool I'm talking about today is MongoSH. And MongoSH is an interactive JavaScript shell uh, built entirely in Node.js, which is why I am at the Node.js conference. And here today, I wanted to talk to you about the challenges of being able to uh, compile this executable uh, binary, which is uh, our Mongo SH project, along with Node.js and how to get it working in different platforms or how to package it up for different platforms. Um, this talk is meant to be like a little case study. So I wanted to walk you through some things that worked for us and some things that didn't work for us and um, kind of tell you about our experiences. Uh, these perhaps will work for you as well. Perhaps they won't, and perhaps you've had different experiences. And if those are different, I would like to hear about them. Um, but yeah, sort of like a case study. Um, on the agenda today, a few things. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Mongo Sage as a project, kind of how it works, uh, show you a little bit of a demo. Um, I think that definitely will let us know a little bit more about what our build requirements are as a project, um, some things that we would have to tackle. And then I'll talk to you about how we tackled those uh, build requirements uh, with kind of the packaging um, epic. Um, a little bit of uh, cat keeping. <laughs> I've got two cats, and it's just past their nap time, so we might have some interruptions. Uh, where I'll have to give some pats. Um, so yeah, just in case they come in. And maybe I've jinxed it, who knows. Um, so first, let's talk a little bit about the project itself, Go Sage. Um, I've mentioned before that it's an interactive JavaScript shell. And you might be thinking, well, I already know an interactive JavaScript shell for Mongo, which you know MongoDB develops. Don't you work for MongoDB? Uh, yes, that's correct. So uh, MongoSH is a rewrite of the Mongo tool you might be familiar with. And uh, the reason we're taking on this project is because uh, a, a need to be able to embed this have come forward. And we wanted to be able to have an interactive shell within Compass. So that was kind of how this project came about and this idea uh, kind of was brought 
for. So when we build Mongo SH, we wanted to make sure it works across different environments, not just in the terminal like you're used to with Mongo. And so Mongo SH was built to be able to work in the browser and Compass, uh, so in Electron applications, as well as the terminal, because of course it's a, it's an interactive shell, so it should work in the terminal. Uh, and by happy accident, um, it's also embeddable in JetBrains data grip, as we uh, got to know folks working on JetBrains that kind of came forward and wanted to embed this as well. So it works across different environments. Um, but how is it different from uh, how is it different from Mongo? And there are a few differences as well. Um, it comes with syntax highlighting and a little bit of contextual help, um, as well as better error messaging. Uh, but most importantly, it comes, it's built of full MongoDB Node API, uh, primarily Node API because our team's experience lies in Node itself. So we're, uh, we could have picked any other driver if we were more familiar with it, but uh, power of the people said Node. And so uh, it's built on top of MongoDB Node API. So if you worked with MongoDB and Node, you have probably used the exact same thing we use, which is the Node driver. And so all the methods that you are used to seeing in the Node driver, we would be using them as well. And you can use that in the Mongo SH shell. And so a little bit about how it looks like uh, you essentially do the exact same thing you would do in Mongo. Uh, you can query the same way. Um, you can you get better error messages. Uh, this is just an example of one, um, and you get syntax highlighted results. Um, but you would query um, the exact same way, and we made sure that that works out um, similarly. Um, you can also kind of copy paste scripts and be able to do that as well and get results back. very short demo, unfortunately, because we want to talk a little bit about packaging. So this is kind of an example of a kind of, I guess this is not a script, but a particular function you can um, run within Mongo SH. I'll get this to run again. So as we're kind of reaching 30 with uh, the old Mongo shell, it's still in team uses this um, in their day-to-day -day work every day. Um, we're still catching up on some things like change streams and transaction APIs, but lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, API is already within Mongo SH. And if you wanted to try it out, you can download it from the download center and see how it works for you. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear it. Um, all right, so let's talk a little bit about the the project itself, like the code itself. I mentioned before that Mongo SH is written in Node.js. Uh, it's also written in TypeScript. Um, and as a, as a shell, it essentially does two different things. Well, it has to evaluate. And the two things that we evaluate is uh, MongoDB functions and JavaScript functions. If you've used the Mongo shell before, you know that you can write JavaScript. So essentially what we do is we run a JavaScript execution environment. Um, and what that really means for us is that we essentially extend the Node.js REPL, which means we use a lots and lots of Node.js functionality within, uh, within our project. And what that really means is that when it comes to packaging and when it comes to bundling, uh, we need to be able to package our executable along with Node.js together um, to actually make this all work. And so um, if you wanted to see, the project is open source, and if you wanted to see how some of the uh, some of the other parts of the application or some of the other parts of the code work, you can take a look in our GitHub project. Um, today, I'll specifically talk about the uh, terminal or the shell implementation of it and how we actually get the packaging working for that. And so let's focus on the terminal and let's talk about some of the build requirements. Uh, I've mentioned that we essentially want to be able to package our project, our executable, along with uh, Node.js. So our primary requirement is to be able to do that, is to be able to create an executable from us as the source code and Node.js. So that's requirement number one. Uh, two, uh, in the future, we won't be able to have 
native add-ons uh, packaged together in the executable uh, itself. Um, if you've worked with MongoDB, you know that we support Kerberos authentication, and that's something that MongoSage would like to be able to support in the future. So that's kind of like a future consideration um, that we'd like to be able to do. Um, for our beloved princess, macOS, we want to be able to sign and notarize our package so you don't get the little annoying message of developer is unknown uh, when you download the package. So we want to make sure it's signed and notarized. That's requirement number three. Um, and we want to make sure that the archives or goals that we create, if you're more familiar with that term, uh, could be included as part of MongoDB's uh, personal packaging archive. If you've downloaded MongoDB from for a Debian or a Red Hat system, uh, MongoDB has a PPA where we distribute other tools um, that we build, and we want to be part of that. So instead of just creating Harbaugh and a zip archive, we also, to, also want to be able to have a Debian uh, .deb and in redheads.rpm uh, archives created. And that would mean that once a user is hooked into um, MongoDB's PBA list, uh, all they have to do is be able to do sudo apt get install MongoSH, which is very nice, even though you have to hook into the list. I think it's a, it's a very nice feeling to have. And uh, because I'm giving this talk, I want to, to tell you all of the things that I just mentioned as build requirements is um, done and is able to be completed. Uh, and if you wanted to kind of take a look into the more great how this build is done, you can take a look into our uh, MongoSH uh, Lerna build package. Uh, and it's linked up in the slide here. Um, right, so we'll specifically talk about some of the tools we use and some of the tools we build to make sure these build requirements are possible. All right, so let's talk about the packaging itself. Um, one of the kind of not a hard requirement, but I'm sure we'll all agree uh, and we're all on the same page that it's really, really nice to be able to do packaging as part of the CI um, ecosystem. Uh, that means that we want to be able to have our binary uh, be able to be generated with every CI run, with every PR and um, with every commit. And so, Part of that is for testing reasons, but the other part is that we want to be able to see perhaps on a particular uh, PR that, um, yes, this Red Hat package works on this Red Hat system and we can download it and play with it. And so that's one of the things that we were able to do. And to be able to do that, there's a few different ways, like we can write YAML and in the beginning we did have a bunch of YAML to be able to do this, but what we ended up doing, we what we ended up doing is kind of writing a, a more or less a node scripts um, a kind of packaging situation. And so a lot of the decisions that we've made were based on the fact that this is going to be part of a node script uh, that we're writing and we're running on our hosts. And so what we have and the, the way our CI works is that we have separate hosts that run a certain, certain set of tasks. We have one for each system that we currently support, which is five of them, Mac OS, Red Hat, Debian, Windows, and Ubuntu. And all of them run their own set of tasks, uh, and they're pretty much identical. And so this kind of looks like with, from the packaging point of view outside of like the test and the check and the end-to-end um, -end tests, uh, the packaging side of things does essentially four steps. Um, the first thing is we bundle our application. Uh, the second thing is we create the Node.js executable. And then we sign and notarize it for Mac OS. And then we create the archive or the tarball or the zip file that we need. And so I'm going to focus on the latter the last three portions of this flowchart uh, because we all can agree that JavaScript does not need another bundler. <laughs> um, but if you're curious for bundling, we use Parcel.js, but I'll talk about from everything that goes um, from there on out. So let's talk about creating a binary first. So um, the thing that we encountered is that there's no, like, there's no native solution to be able to say, I have a source file and I have Node.js, Node.js, and I want to be able to create an executable. Uh, a native solution like that does not exist. 
Uh, but there are a few different options that we found that are quite good, uh, but unfortunately didn't quite work for us. And I'll show you how these kind of ended up, how we ended up in the beginning to, to use these. So uh, first we worked with PKG for a little bit and the way it worked was it, it's, it's very straightforward to use. Um, we use the particular target, uh, Windows, Linux, or Mac, and we just create the executable from it. But the, the issues that we found with it is that it was a little bit difficult for us to sign to notarize. And this, I'm saying this and I, this does not work for us. PKG does not work for us in our particular use case, but there's nothing wrong with this, uh, solution. And I'm not here to dis neither PKG or Nexi. Um, we found that it was difficult to sign and notarize uh, a tiny little bit of, and you may call me pedantic, we were unable to override process.title. So then when you do like uh, PSAUX and you wanted to grab for like your process, you weren't able to do it. Perhaps that's a little bit pedantic, but, but that's fine. Um, and we found that it was a little bit tricky to add native at modules with that. So at some point, we basically had a, a dual compilation or separate compilations for different hosts. And so when we wanted to sign and notarize, we used Nexi. And Nexi, um, our Nexi compilation looked a little bit like this. That worked fine. So we had dual compilation and it worked for a little bit. Uh, but we found that with Nexi, uh, it uses the deprecated third-party main mechanism, which meant that we were... Uh, we would have to be only using node 12x and we couldn't move past that. Um, it created a little bit of a bigger binary, which is not a big deal if you, we just wanted really, really to make sure that it's signed and notarized. Um, but in the future, once we wanted to add Kerberos support, it was a little bit trickier to add native modules. And so what we ended up doing is uh, our team wrote our own kind of box node implementation. Uh, Boxnode is a package that I'm going to introduce that helped us uh, basically do what we wanted to do. Uh, there's an alternative version of the slide in case the cats wouldn't show up, and I promise cats, so I want to make sure I give people what they want. So if you wanted a different introduction of Boxnode, this is Boxnode. Um, what it does essentially is it takes um, the source.js file and it takes a version of Node.js and puts it all together. Um, so box node is then able to have a single executable that takes those two things and makes it into one. So it contains an executable with both of those or equivalent of two cats, you decide. And so if you wanted to take a look at the implementation itself, it's under the mongodb-js box node uh, GitHub repo. And it's relatively straightforward to follow. And I'm going to walk you through a little bit of what happens under the hood. Um, so it, the implementation uses the nodes native um, and better API. Uh, it's relatively new, uh, but it allows, allows us to do really good things with what we exactly wanted. So if you are not familiar with the embedder API, you can find it on the Node.js documentation. It has a bunch of templates that you could use and that we've used and adjusted for box node. And perhaps, um, so it kind of looks like this when we when we actually uh, use it. Very simple, you pass in the source file, which is our bundled up with parcel uh, Mongo SH, and we say where we wanted to go and which node version we wanted to use and what's our namespace, which is Mongo SH. We get that all together and we get an executable out of it. And under the hood, perhaps it looks a little bit scary, but essentially what happens is that what it does is it replaces node's main uh, .cc file, which is the entry file, and replaces it with the Mongo Sage entry as like a, uh, uses using a template. It replaces it with Mongo Sage. Um, what it also allows us to do is modify the JIP configuration with the native add-on we want to use. So once we want to bring back Kerberos or bring in Kerberos support, we're able to simply add it to the arguments we pass into the compile uh, function, and it modifies the JIP under the hood, and we're able to have that. Um, in the process flow, once it modifies JIP configuration, uh, it then replaces the main.cc file with our own implementation. And it, when I say it replaces, it literally 
uh, replaces. <laughs> um, and then it compiles Node.js from source along with our, um, our implementation, like literally just runs make uh, dash j dash whichever is your CPUs uh, on the current host system. And so then what we end up is having Mongo Sage compiled together with Node.js, which is exactly what we wanted to do. And again, the API that we actually use in Mongo Sage is relatively straightforward, kind of similar to what other tools out there provide, but it's really nice to be able to say that uh, our source file is bundled together and it's using a native API where we can have native add-ons in the future. So kind of once we have this executable, we want to see what is the next thing and how can we sign and notarize. And what essentially sign and notarize requires one, one single thing is for a single entry binary. So it's a binary that in the terms that we sort of spoke now, uh, it's a binary that has one single main.cc file. And so thankfully that was uh, solved by being able to use box node. And so essentially what we're then doing is using two packages um, to be able to do signing and authorization. Uh, one of them is called node, co node uh, code sign. Uh, it's one of the ones we maintain and Essentially, the API looks like this. You get the code sign and you sign it with the Apple identities, things you have gotten from Apple when you sign up for their kind of um, for their developer program. Um, and for Notarize, we use Electron uh, Notarize, uh, which is maintained by the amazing Electron team. And if you've done anything Electron, they have so many beautiful things that we use in Compass. And this is one of them that we use in MongoSage itself, uh, which allows for a really easy API to be able to notarize a package. Again, just import, uh, pass in the Apple uh, IDs that you got from the um, developer program from Apple and you notarize. So all we needed is the kind of like that single entry uh, executable. And so, creating archives. So now that we have the executable that's created for the specific platform uh, that we're running the task on, we want to be able to create archives. So kind of the four that we do is Tarball, Debian, RPM, and Zip. Uh, and there are two available packages when we started off. Tar, which is widely used in the Node ecosystem, and there's ADM Zip that we use to package the uh, Zip file. And for Debian and RPM, we wrote two of our own pkg-rpm and pkg-dep. Um, and the API for them is incredibly similar. You will say, Ira, you just uh, copy paste the slides and I will tell you, yes, I copy paste the slides. Um, and the API we wrote is just uh, incredibly simple. Um, what it does under the hood is it just runs um, everything dynamically on each of the hosts for Debian and Red Hat and creates all the necessary files that both of these package managers, uh, package bundlers require. Um, but all you have to do is kind of pass in your executable and where you want it to output. And when we create archives, we basically do it based on which host is currently getting run because, uh, for example, pkg-deb uh, requires dpkg and dpkg is usually only available on Ubuntu systems and Debian systems. So obviously we can't create like this archive on a Mac OS, for example, without having that tool installed previously. So all of these are kind of done based on the host we're currently on. All right. Um, so kind of wanted to wrap up uh, the things that we talked about today. So kind of wrapping sort of slide. Um, today, we talked about packaging uh, Mongo Sage and the things that we use. Um, essentially, our requirement was to be able to create a, a, an executable that would take our source code, that would take Node.js and create a single executable that would be able to, to work in um, our various environments. We wanted to be able to add native add-ons as part of that executable process and Boxnode, uh, the tool that we wrote, was able to help us kind of achieve that. 
um, BoxNode works in a way where it replaces Node's uh, main file with our own and then compiles it into a single executable. Uh, we also wanted to be able to sign and notarize, and we're able to do that with the tools uh, that uh, with uh, sign and notarize tools, and uh, that makes it a lot easier by having that's made a lot easier by having um, our executable created with BoxNode. And uh, when we create archives, we use various tools as the, the system uh, kind of provides, and some that we've written. And we're then able to kind of distribute them according to which system we're running in. Um, if you want to try out MongoSH, uh, you can download it from the our download center, like I mentioned before. And if you are curious about uh, the build process and kind of how it works under the hood, you can look into um, our Learner build repo in MongoSH uh, repository and see how it is um, for you. Um, I'm presenting on behalf of a team, uh, and I wanted to make sure my team gets a shout out. A shout out um, as part of this, uh, Mongo Sage would not be built without them, and so I wanted to make sure they get the recognition they deserve. Um, and when I build slides, uh, some of them are based on other artwork, and I wanted to also put down references to that I've either adjusted or sort of recreated. Um, and thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much for listening. Uh, I'm Irina on Twitter uh, with an underscore and L's. Um, and if you have questions uh, about Mongo SH or Compass or VS Code extension, you can reach me on Twitter or just email us at compass at mongodb.com. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Irina. Thank you. Um, We've got one question. Do we have time for just one question? I hope so. Um, Joel, yeah, Joel's asking if um, asking how much time does it take to compile and notarize? Uh, how much time does it take to compile and notarize? Was that the question? That's the question. Yes. Um, it takes about forty minutes or so, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, and we do a little bit of caching on the host itself. So um, caching meaning for like actually compiling Node, uh, Node.js. Um, and that could slim down to maybe 20 minutes. Or it's still a little bit of time. Like it's not, e it's not cheap time-wise. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I'm sorry the cats didn't make an appearance, but I'm glad they got to be in your slides. I know. Um, Disappointing. <laughs>